Okay. Okay. Okay, I'm Vlad. I'm going to be doing the Apostle Paul. Hi, I'm Paul. I am probably one of the most controversial figures in history. I was hated and persecuting, uh, persecuted during my time, and I am hated even today. Some people hate me more than they hate Jesus Christ. Thomas Jefferson, one of the founding fathers of America, said that I was the first corrupter of the doctrine of Jesus. My original name was Saul. I was born in Tarsus of the tribe of Benjamin, and during my early life I trained under Gam Gamaliel to be a Pharisee. But while I, oh, initially I persecuted the Church of God and even tried to make other Christians blaspheme against Jesus and forsake their faith. But while I was on my way to Damascus to take Christians to prison, I was stopped by a bright light, a bright light that knocked me to the ground, and I heard a voice say, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? I replied, Who are you, Lord? The voice replied, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. Others around me saw the light, but they did not hear the voice. Soon after this experience, I began to preach the faith which I once destroyed. My mission in life was to glorify the name of Jesus Christ and spread his good news among the nations. I planted many churches throughout Rome, and my letters to those churches are now considered holy scripture and God-inspired. In the 13 letters that I wrote, I referred to Jesus Christ 230 times. He was truly the centerpiece of my theology and teachings. My focus was not his earthly ministry, but began with his death and resurrection. One of my defining statements was in Galatians 2.20, I said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I was not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, and I believed that it was the power of God to save everyone who believes, to the Jews first and also to the Greeks. I thought that salvation was a free gift from God to anyone who put their faith in Christ, regardless whether they were circumcised and came under law. In fact, I taught that the more sin a person committed, the more grace God had for that person, so everyone could be forgiven, no matter how great of sins they may have committed. This was very controversial in the original church, and it took me some time to convince the other apostles to believe like I believed and to accept Gentiles into the church without having them become circumcised. Many people believed that I had a low view of women, but that is not entirely true. I taught that in Jesus Christ there was neither Jew nor Greek, neither bond nor free, neither male nor female, but that we were all one in Christ. And although I said Christian women should submit, to their husbands as they submit to Christ. I also taught that men should love their wives as Christ loved the church and gave his life for it. I also didn't blame Eve for bringing uh, sin into the world. I said, wherefore as by one man sin entered into the world and death by sin. Eve was this, just someone who tempted Eve. My writings have affected history quite a bit. I did contribute to the Holy Bible, which is the most popular book in history. The letters I wrote were the foundation for basic Christian living and church structure. Most of the controversies in Christianity today revolve around my writings and how to interpret them. My most famous passage of writing is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, where I describe the attributes of love. It reads, love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it does not dishonor others, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. Many consider this passage to be the most beautiful passage in the entire New Testament. It is commonly read at funerals and weddings, and it was in fact read by Tony Blair at Princess Diana's funeral, which was watched by over 2.5 billion people. <laughs> Although many will deny my claims to be true, they cannot deny the influence my writings have had on history. There really would be no Christianity without me. And a world history without Christianity would be a very world, uh, different world today. Whether the world would be better off without my influence in Christianity, well, that is for you to decide. Yeah. <laughs>